Welcome to Bard's Breathe Easy Service Program. My name is Rick Downey and today we're going to take a look at the heat pump defrost board, functions, operation, and diagnostics. Let's do some component identification on the board. This is the 24 volt hot input to the board direct from the transformer. The dip switches on this board are used to adjust the low pressure time delay. The default setting is 120 seconds and we'll cover that in detail soon. These are the common terminals and here's where the defrost sensor connects. This is the normally closed outdoor fan relay. This relay is used to open the condenser fan during a defrost cycle. These are the speed up terminals used to turn minutes to seconds in order to advance the board and do some diagnostics. This is the defrost timer jumper. You select the amount of accumulated run minutes based on the type of unit that you're using and we'll cover that in detail a little farther on. Here we're looking at the sensor jump terminals. By jumping these terminals we simulate defrost conditions. In other words, we make the board think that it's colder than 30 degrees outside. There are onboard diagnostics. Let's review the blink codes. Slow is normal function. That's one second on and one second off like a heartbeat. One on, one off, one on, one off. A fast blink code signals that the board is in the time delay mode. The short cycle delay timer is one tenth of a second on, one tenth of a second off. Very rapid. You'll easily recognize that code. Next, one blink code for low pressure switch hard lockout. Two blinks for high pressure switch soft lockout. Three blinks indicate the board is in defrost mode. And four blinks is a high pressure switch hard lockout. Here's a service tip for you. If you ever question which code you're receiving for a single flash, whether it's normal or low pressure lockout, use your meter and measure from the L terminal on the board to common. If you're in a low pressure lockout, there's 24 volts present on this terminal. The sequence of operation. We always have 24 volts input on the R terminal. But if we send 24 volts to the Y terminal after energizing the unit, we could jump the speed up terminal and advance that five minute wait down just to a few seconds. When the Y terminal is energized, both of our pressure switch circuits are proven. The board will send an output on the CC terminal to the compressor contactor, and that's basically what the board does for the cooling circuit. Also note that the common wire goes through that relay on the top left corner of the board, and these contacts are normally closed during operation, and only during the defrost cycle do the contacts open. On startup, the low pressure switch has a delay or an overlook period. For 120 seconds, we simply overlook an open pressure switch on startup and on startup only. The delay starts when the Y call is initiated and no other time during the cycle has this delay come into play. If the low pressure switch opens any other time, a hard lockout is immediate and will require a reset. At the beginning of the Y signal, the timer starts and over the next 120 seconds, as long as the switch closes before the two minutes are up, it will continue to run as if nothing happened. But if that switch is still open at the end of two minutes, it will initiate a hard lockout and require a manual restart. A high pressure switch has no delay and the soft lockout is immediate. So once the switch opens, the board shuts down, the automatic short cycle delay uh, will start. And after the delay expires, as long as the switch is closed, the board will restart the unit again. The board allows up to two high pressure switch trips in an hour during the same call for heat or cool. The third open switch will send the board into a hard lockout. And that causes 24 volts at the L terminal and will require a manual restart. Notice in the high pressure switch circuit, I have one condensate switch drawn in. The ITEX manufactured before fall of 2018 actually have two condensate switches in series with the high pressure switch. So if any of those three switches open and cause it to run for a third event, it will go into a hard lockout. 
ITEX manufactured after the fall of 2018 have the condensate switches in a different circuit, so they won't affect the high pressure switch lockout circuit. When we turn the thermostat to heat and set it for a call for heat, we're sending 24 volts to the B on the board, which is the reversing valve input, and we're sending 24 volts to Y on the compressor circuit. That will energize our pressure switch circuit. It will energize the compressor contactor as shown. It will also bring on the condenser fan motor. And finally, the reversing valve. All of these things happen simultaneously when we send inputs to YMB, closing relays on the board, and sending outputs to the compressor contactor and the reversing valve. To perform an operation test on the board, if it's locked out, we need to reset the power and make sure we're calling for heat or cool. The LED lamp will blink fast for the 5 minute delay. Jump the speed up pins to change this 5 minute delay to seconds. The system should initiate the compressor operation. Remove the speed up jumper, watch performance, check your pressures or temperature drop or rise across the coil, etc. Let's take a look at defrost. The board tracks the accumulated compressor runtime below 30 degrees and it can be set to 30, 60, or 90 minutes. The recommended settings below are based on the type of unit that you have. Wall mounts are 60 minutes, package units 60 minutes, the QTEC classroom indoor units are 30, and the ITEC classroom units are recommended for 90 minutes. This is accumulated compressor runtime below 30 degrees. To enter defrost, the sensor must see 30 degrees and it must have accumulated the runtime based on the jumper setting. To exit the defrost, the defrost sensor must see 57 degrees or a maximum of 8 minutes, whichever comes first. When we're in defrost, we turn the fan off Turn the heater on and de-energize the reversing valve to put the system back into cooling. We turn the fan off by breaking the common wire on the large relay on the upper left corner of the board. If we want to put the unit into a defrost test, we reset the power if it's locked out and call for heating. The LED lamp will blink fast for a 5 minute delay. Jump the speed up pins to bypass that 5 minutes and change it to seconds. The system should initiate compressor operation. Leave the speed up jumper in place and do one of the following. If the temperatures are below 30 at the coil sensor, then wait for the defrost to kick in. If the temperature outdoors is above 30, then use the sense jump terminals. Put a jumper on there to simulate the cold temp. Remove the speed up jumper upon defrost operation. If the sense jump terminals are jumped but no defrost occurs after two minutes with the speed up terminals jumped, board is not functional. If defrost does not seem to be occurring naturally, remove the blue sensor leads and test for proper resistance based on temperature and the chart in the manual. Shorted leads on the sensor can cause multiple board failures, so test the leads for continuity or resistance to the chassis. When replacing the board, always replace the sensor. This picture shows a bare spot in the lead wire of a defrost sensor, and this particular short caused many board replacements and unnecessary service calls. When you order a board, it comes in a kit, and it also includes the sensor, and you should replace that sensor with every new board. The Heat Pump Defrost Board Replacement Kit 8620-223 is made up of the current defrost control board and a new defrost sensor and this kit is designed to replace the previous 8201-102-119 and the 129 board. It includes a label with the new blink codes to be placed inside the unit. Don't forget about BARD Technical Service Hotline at 1-419-636-0439. They're open from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday, Eastern Standard Time. For training questions or information, please contact rick.downey at bardhvac.com. Thank you for viewing this video, and thank you for choosing BARD.